see that everything is looking green and tall. And today we have some harvesting to do. So we haven't checked in out here in quite some time. So I wanted to show you exactly how things are growing and coming along for the fall and winter garden. Lots of green and leafy things out here today. So let me show you exactly what we've got and let's do some harvesting together today. Okay, so one thing you're gonna notice today is that I have chicken friends in the garden with me today. I am a softie and this is what has become basically the retirement home for chickens because we've had a lot of chickens getting picked on so that today there are one, two, three, there's four chickens in here and basically they're spending their days in here. I also put a little chicken tractor in here for them to sleep in at night because they just are kind of like older chickens or you see the little white silky guy there. He is getting picked on a lot by our turkeys right now. So he had a peck die. We also have another one who was getting picked on by turkeys. So sometimes they just need some separation and a little time to have some R&R &R on their own. So they're living their best life here in the garden at this point. Um, that buff right there, she's just an old girl and she was just not doing too much in, the, in with the rest of the flock. So she also got moved in here. And luckily for me, once the plants are good size like this, you know how I struggle with the chickens getting in here and tearing things up. Once the plants are a good size, they really don't do much damage to them. Of course, they have a few bites on the leaves and things like that, but that's okay. They can have a little bit. There's plenty for us too. So today, the majority of what I have to harvest is quite frankly, collard greens and turnip greens. Oh my gosh, we have so much turnips to harvest today. I have to show you the size of the actual turnips themselves. You're gonna be impressed. I'm impressed. I didn't even notice how big they had gotten because they were underneath that black fabric. So I am excited to see exactly how big the turnips themselves are. And then we can do something with them in the kitchen. I've seen people roast them. I've seen people kind of cut them up like fries and use them that way. So I think that's actually gonna be really good and fun to try cooking those too. So. Anyway, let's get started on the harvest. I'll take you and show you exactly what's growing in here and what we have to harvest today. Okay, so we'll start over here with the broccoli and some broccoli I've already harvested. I took a little video when I did it too. So I'll, I'll put that in here of some of the nice, I got two big broccoli heads already and then the rest of these are still kind of coming along. So this one will become a nice big head of broccoli and it's looking so pretty. And then this spot here is one that I already harvested and you can see it gets a little, a few little um, broccoli florets will grow out of the side after you harvest, but not too much, not too much. This I believe is a cauliflower. Now I'm not seeing much action in here quite yet, but maybe it will make a cauliflower. I'm not sure, we'll see, we'll give it plenty of time. And then these over here are I think these are cauliflower as well. They're not quite there yet. So yeah, that's where the little cauliflower will start. This is gonna be cauliflower too. Over on this side, I did harvest a broccoli. Here's another good size broccoli head here. This guy, look at how pretty. The broccoli is just looking so good. And then on this one is the one that I harvested from already. You can see the spot there, but look at all the little florets on it. It's growing a bunch of little florets on this one. So isn't that cute? They'll make a few more florets, but they will only make one big head of broccoli. And over here, these are collards. You guys, I have so much collards. I, I don't really know how I ended up with this much, but I did. Down this way, we have got, I already pulled up a bunch of radishes. I, I harvested a couple this morning. And this is the garlic. So it is looking really good. This is how ours will grow. You grow it over the winter here, so it has a nice long growing season. And it's looking really good. Just grows really slowly this way. Now that was peas. I never trellis trellised them up or anything, and it looks like the chickens have kind of gotten to them, but that's fine. Here are, this is Brussels sprouts. It will be Brussels sprouts. Look at this, beautiful mustard greens. Isn't it pretty? It's like, I hate to harvest this because look at how gorgeous it is. I may just leave it alone because it's so pretty out here. Those leaves are enormous. This is more Brussels, still growing. That was one of the last things that I put in, these Brussels sprouts. Brussels there. This is a little broccoli. 
can hardly even see in there. This is a whole row of collards, with the exception of this front one that is a uh, Brussels sprouts. But the rest of that is all collards, and we have a huge harvest to do here today of collard greens. Now let me show you these turnips. You guys, these are enormous. Look at this. My hand cannot even fit around <laughs> this turnip. It is so huge. I did one harvest of just greens off of these turnips. There's several more down the row there. So I did one harvest earlier in the season of the turnips. They were not that great because it was still pretty warm actually. So they were very bitter. Now turnips are naturally a little bit bitter, but they, um, they just didn't have the best flavor because it wasn't really cool enough for them yet. But these, the second round of these will be a lot better. A few cabbages that are making heads. Sorry, here we go with the geese. And then the purple cabbage over here. My neighbor thinned out a bunch of lettuce that she had planted and sent over some little starts of the, that. So I have some pretty lettuce growing in here too. I just popped it in a few spots that were empty. Like there's one over there as well in the midst of all those things. So yeah, there is lots growing here. Let's get harvesting. Okay, so what I did was just bring out a few buckets and bins with me today. And we'll just toss everything into here. I'm going to start with all the collard greens and let's see exactly how much we get of these. What I'm going to do is harvest these outside leaves and I will leave sort of the middle ones in there and they'll continue to grow even as the, uh, as the season goes on here. So I just brought a little kitchen knife in out here with me and I will just cut these off and into my bucket they're going to go. I'll have to take everything in to wash it up most likely. Some of these, uh, this is a, what is this? I think this is a cauliflower here. I'm just going to cut off any bad leaves that I see. And actually, I'll just drop them here in the pathways. They'll be fine. Either the chickens will munch on them or they will just um, compost in place, which is good too. You see everything out here is covered in leaves and that's okay. Because that is sort of natural mulch out here. I just let the leaves fall and stay where they are here in the garden. And could have cut off one more here. That one's not so great. I just let it lay. And we'll see, just leave that much on there. I had started some onion seeds in the back part of this bed here. I really don't see any of them. Maybe one. This is a green bean. I did get a nice harvest of green beans off of the green bean plants. I really was like, I don't know if they're going to do anything or not. This is an onion here. So I'm just going to cut off the long top of it and leave a little bit so that maybe it will toughen up and continue to grow. I think these are all broccoli here. This one here is collards as well. Now there are onions growing better on the back side of these, especially down here at this end where they had a little bit more sunlight to get going. Good. Toss these leaves. Want these leaves? Is that Jake? Yeah. No, that's Jill. Here, Jill. You can have those. Jake is still up on his perch in the tree, it looks like. What is the date? The 28th of December. So I knew I needed to get a good harvest of greens before New Year's. You know, you guys, you, got, you have to eat your greens on New Year's. So you need to eat your black eyed peas and some greens for the best luck through your year. To be a good southerner, you must do this. I don't know if this is a thing everywhere. Probably it is. You can have this one. I'll keep the good ones. You take that one. Okay. Okay. 
And you guys, it is probably the coolest day that we've had in a long time. It has been so warm. On Christmas Day, it was around almost 70 degrees. It, and humid, weird temperature. That just is hard to get in the Christmas spirit for that. Like I said, some of these have got some holes and things in them. These I'll just pile up and we'll give those to the chickens. I think we have plenty to share this season. So that's great. Yum. Did you notice my new muck boots? My husband got me new muck boots for Christmas. I was so excited. Are they not the cutest muck boots you've ever seen? I love them. They're clean for now. And they're so comfortable. Okay, just cleaning up these radishes here that I had put in my box. And then some of this other stuff in here. All right, I did go ahead and harvest the mustard greens because they're just too beautiful to not. They look so good. And they're just like so crisp. So we had to get those. We go in and get my other stacks that I made here. Big stacks of these. Two stacks. This is the ones I'm going to give to the chickens here in this little pile. This is all the rest. Oh, oh. this is them so far. <laughs> There's a bucket full. Okay, this is it so far, and then we got to get those turnips. That's going to be fun. First, let's give these not perfect ones to the birds over there because they are watching watching and waiting aren't they that's captain ron if you saw in front of the camera there there you go hey turk there you go get your greens okay let's set these up here and then we'll go in for the turnips so I'm going to bring you in a little bit closer. That way you can see the turnips better. Okay, so this is the first turnip we're going to get to here. Let's see if we can pull it out. It's literally just enormous. So we don't want to take the greens first. Oh yeah, it's nice and loose to pull out. The soil is so loose under it. Just going to work it until it comes out of there. Not a nail. Let me show you exactly what that is. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Let me show you. That's a landscape staple from that fabric. That is it growing into that. Oh my word. Look at how that grew. This is the first one, and it actually has a landscape staple grown into it. Let's see if we can even get that off of there. I am like amazed, shocked and amazed. That actually like bent that open the way it was growing. Oh my word. But look at the size of this turnip. Yeah, it's pretty big. It is huge. 
Okay, what am I doing with the landscape today? This turnip is enormous. Look at how big it is. We have a few more to harvest and let's see exactly how big they are too. Wow, I can't believe that um, landscape staple was grown into there. Yeah, we, might, we, might have to, we might have to cut that part off, but it's beautiful. All right, so I'm gonna keep going. There's a few more down the row here and I'm just gonna get pulling. Okay, friends, well, I'm going to switch to voiceover for most of the rest of this video because this was one of those days where the temperature was dropping rather than going up and a cold wind was blowing in and it was getting so windy. For the rest of the time, I'll just talk to you and tell you exactly what I'm doing. And obviously, I'm still working on my turnips here and pulling these out. This was the most fun I have had harvesting greens. In fact, everything grew so beautifully this year. I was shocked because as we had such a dry summer and then finally we got plenty of rain for these things. I'm showing you on this bulb's roots. There's a lot of little balls growing on there and I'm not sure if those are more turnips starting to grow on there like spreading or if that is sometimes that can be like a um, disease or something. So I don't know. I'll have to Google that at some point, but I'm just going to carry on working away here harvesting these turnips. They grew so, so well much earlier in the season. I harvested a lot of the leaves off of them, and we had one batch of turnip greens early in the season. So before the temperature had really dropped down very much at all, we did some greens, and they were not great, honestly, because it really wasn't cool enough outside for the greens quite yet. So I can assure you, though, I have since prepared these greens, all of these greens, collards and turnips together. And um, they are so much better at this point because it's really, really cool outside now. And they had lots of good water <laughs> to actually grow. So the flavor of these was much better. And when it comes time to put the fall garden in, it is like such a struggle in late summer when you really burn out on gardening. But fall gardening is so nice actually once you get everything planted out you can just kind of leave it be it doesn't take nearly as much management and attention as the spring and summer garden because the things just sort of grow on their own also there's so much less pest pressure in the garden at this point because there's not bugs and worms and all kinds of things trying to attack your plants constantly so that is really <laughs> nice as well it just sort of manages itself and then it grows. And also here for us in the south, that's when we start to get more rain. So things do not need nearly the attention that they need in the spring and summer. We still have a few things to look forward to harvesting in the future here in the winter garden. And that'll be those cauliflower, most likely some more broccoli and the cabbages. We still have some time for them to head up and grow as well. I have these propped up against the fence there. That's the turnip greens. See, everybody is having a good munch. <laughs> oh my goodness. My stuff fell down back behind there. I wanted to do a little bit of cleaning on these things before I tried to take them in the house and put them in the refrigerator and everything. So as you can see, I'm, I'm adding layers as I go. I have a new coat on at this point because it's getting colder and colder outside throughout the day, but I wanted to wash off as much of the dirt from these as I could because the bottom of the turnips especially are very, very dirty and sandy. And so I'm just, I've ran some water into a bowl there and I'm just going to plunge those into that cold water and get off as much of the sand and everything that I can, cutting the tops off so that I can deal with the greens when I go inside. Everything that's good is going into that big cracker barrel box there and then I'm cutting away as much of the dirt and unusable part of the um, bulb part of the turnips and then putting them into the water there so they can just be rinsed off. I took about two days to um, deal with these and then it was time to cook them for New Year's Day. But the next day, I just gave these sort of a double wash, all of the greens the collards, the mustard greens, and these turnip greens. I ended up just washing them all at once, sort of double washing them. I put them in one sink of cold water, rinsed them off, and then I ran a new sink of cold water and rinsed them again. So 
just to get them as clean as I possibly could. And then, of course, you also need to remove that big woody sort of stem piece that's throughout the middle of the leaf. That way you get rid of it before you cook them down too because it's really hard and tough. And also that's the bird's favorite part. So that's the part that will be given to them today. A little bit later, we'll toss all this scraps to the birds out in the garden and they'll be really, really happy with that because you saw how much they already wanted to eat the leafy greens. So anytime I can give the chickens and other birds some good scraps, I am happy to do that because it just supplements their feed and gives them a lot of good nutrition as well. Also, I think that pecking and scratching at different things is sort of enriching for the chickens. Now, I, I'm not so big on enrichment that I want them throughout the whole garden, but I'm glad to give them little scraps here and there. That way they can play around with them and eat what they can from them as well. And you see, I always have Clark by my side. He is managing whatever it is I'm doing. At this point, I just pulled out a lot of the biggest, woodiest stems. That way I can just go ahead and give them to the chickens while I'm out this direction. And the collars, I think I already took inside because they were not nearly as dirty since they're not growing, you know, straight out of the ground like that. The leaves are more elevated off the ground, so they don't get as dirty as these turnip greens. And if I didn't say it before, I wanted to let you know that my next video will be the video of what exactly I did with all these greens to preserve them and how we enjoyed them for our New Year's Day meal. So I really appreciate you being here today and I hope to see you back here again for my next one. See you real soon.